Okay, my name is Mona Nasser. I'm the clinical lecturer in evidence-based dentistry in the dental school, and I'm also the co-convener of the Pride Setting Methods Group. Unlike the other speakers, I will be talking about how we actually came up with the question of sustainability, rather than telling you what we did next. So i give you a bit of a background from another project that we started and how we ended up with the Sustainability Institute. So I work uh, with an international organization called the Cochrane Collaboration. The Cochrane Collaboration is made of 20,000 people, uh, 20,000, 30,000 people around the world working on doing systematic reviews to inform decision making. And the organization has a lot of different entities in it, and one of them are methods groups. I'm, I'm um, leading one of those methods groups, which um, provides methodological advice and policy guidance around prioritization and how you do prior setting. But we realized that the methods of prior setting, there is not enough methodological research involved in it, so we also do empirical sure studies around it. So before I go forward, how many of you have been involved in a research prior setting exercise? Can you just put your hands up? Thank you. How many of you had made decision on selecting question for your own research project? Oh. Um, I would argue that many of you have been involved in the research project setting exercise because you're making decisions about what research should be done. However, when we in the dentist school, we felt that we want to take a different approach about how we do set priorities. So instead of just uh, us as um, researchers making decisions what research we do, we, what we would like to engage with outside stakeholders and ask them what's their problems. And before we started to do it, in order to have a common definition of what we mean by prior setting, how we want to approach it, we came up with this, uh, this notion of this collective activity to come with uncertainties. And, the f and we have, uh, so we wanted to engage with stakeholders to understand what the problems are, and we wanted to use our expertise in doing systematic reviews to use it to find guide us through the research project. So at the time when I moved here, there was uh, the Professor Liz Kay, who is the funding dean of the um, dental school, has worked with the British Dental Association to have a process to engage with primary care dentists and asking the questions about them. And the dentists themselves would prioritize the question and we do a rapid review to see whether there is a gap of evidence or not. And interestingly, one of the questions that came up was a sustainability question. People were asking about how we can decrease water usage and how we can uh, better manage our usage of plastic there. We, we took one part of this question and tried to do a rapid review about it. One of the things you would learn, you would, you would know about rapid reviews if you're in a systematic review community, the only thing we are in common know about rapid reviews, they are done rapidly. Anything else about the methodology, we don't agree about it. However, one of the things we, uh, I was experimenting when I was in my previous job in the HTA agency, in health technology assessment agency in Germany was about, when you have an evidence review and you find nothing, what do you do? So we were kind of experimenting with looking at the different dimension of the question that might indirectly ask your question, answer your question or give you guidance what's the next step of research. And surprisingly, not, not surprisingly, but really, when we did the search about the plastic use, we didn't find anything, neither about the quantity of the problem nor about how to manage it. However, we found we extended our search and we all found a narrative review talking about uh, environmental regulations and how they relate to the dental practice. And interestingly, we had the public engagement session later with dentists, and it is there is a kind of ambiguity for people: what is the environmental laws that is relevant to them and where they should access it and how they should manage it. However, the article suggests environmental audit as a potential intervention that it could be used. And we took that and worked with kind of with Janet and Jane about kind of how we can start doing this project. And we, very, very, um, we got an Aussie grant from the ISSR kindly to give, help us to do it. I only point out one other study that I found in this rapid review, which I found kind of interesting, was somebody did a clinical trial comparing randomly which intervention has less waste, uh, wastage, which raised the question, we all have all of this intervention in the healthcare, and some of them don't have such a big difference from patient outcome, whether the environmental outcome can be a um, decision-making choice, which one we take. So. Coming to the end of it, uh, what I wanted to say is engaging with stakeholders sometimes comes, helps you to find the most important uncertainties you have and what some of these questions emerge from them. And kind of using evidence, um, rapid review methods can help you to guide you which research comes up. And I think with a broad, broad topic area like sustainability in some areas where there is less research done, that could be a good way to kind of direct and guide the research in the right way. 
Thank you very much.